Okay, so um, I was encouraged to do a little, little message uh, concerning legal and law, you know, and how it, and how it pertains to marriage. You know, you have legal marriages and you have lawful marriages. You know, and oftentimes they're confused to be the same thing, but not quite. For example, this is a legal marriage. <laughs> so is this. Even though these are legal marriages, they're not lawful marriages. Because the numero uno lawmaker said, Thou shalt not lie to mankind as a woman. You know, so even though you can have something legal, that doesn't make it lawful. But everything that's lawful is also legal. Yeah, I know that sounds a bit like a tongue twister, but we'll get a little bit more into it as we go along. You know, and just for y'all to remember, remember this this was once legal, you know, where man declared war on his own people and tried to take out, you know, a great portion of the population of a certain nationality. All law stems from God's law, or the law of the most high. You know, and this is well very well acknowledged, you know, worldwide. Uh, it used to be called common law, you know, which is again based upon the law of the most high. Today we have a legal system. And even though these laws set the precedence for the legal system. Down the line, some of the things that became legal were the necessary problem. So this leads us to a moral dilemma. You know, and we find ourselves questioning as to whether or not to conform to what's legal or to stand for morality. Conformity is what is doing what everybody else is doing regardless of what is right. Yet morality is doing what is right regardless of what everybody else is doing. Right. You know, so we are going to have to ask ourselves this question. Are we just going to be conformists or are we going to be moralists? Are we going to just go along and get along? Or are we going to stand for what's right? You know, and I encourage folks to stand for what's right, regardless of what everybody else is doing. That doesn't make me the most popular guy, ever, but nevertheless. So, as before mentioned, everything that is lawful is legal, but everything that's legal isn't necessarily lawful. Lawful speaks to the principal distinction between between the terms lawful and legal. Um, the principal distinction between these terms is that the former contemplates substance of law and the latter the form of law, Black's Law Dictionary Sixth Edition. So what's meant by substance and form? Substance speaks to the essence, the material or essential part of a thing is distinguished from form, which is essential. So what does essential speak to? It speaks to the essence of a thing. And the essence of a thing is that part which is indispensable. You know, so this is the part we want to deal with. You know, legal speaks to something that's conforming to the law, according to the law, required or permitted by law, not forced by the courts as the inference or imputation of the law as a matter of instruction rather than established by actual proof. You know, so, and then form, which is something that follows Realities, you know, is in contradistinction to substance. Form means the legal instruments or judicial proceedings, or in the construction of legal documents or processes, the antithesis of substance. It's the antithesis of substance. Now, these terms also occur in scripture. So let us see how they utilize in scripture and see if there's any difference. You know. Reading Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, it says, Now, 
faith is the substance, the essence, the indispensable part of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were granted by the word of Elohim, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now we're going to take a look at an example of form, you know, that that speaks to legality. Second Titus or Second um, Timothy 3, 1 through 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are dead, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of their own, having a form of God. So they don't have the substance of God, but a form of God, but yeah. denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave a captive city when they make their sin, led away with God their lust, ever learning, ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, again, everything that is lawful is legal, but everything that is legal is not necessarily lawful. You know, now, when we start talking about lawful um, law and lawful you know, it stems from the natural law that the Creator put in place, and from there stems what we call maxims, maxims of equity or maxims of law. Now, let's talk about maxim. A maxim is an absolute moral statement. I uh, can't say that these had to be universal. For example, do not murder. That's pretty. Universalism. Say that three times for you. Um, universal universal uh, ability is the ability to use a maxim everywhere and by means so that the maxim is never broken. For example, the can the dialogue, the decalogue is a set of maxims that should be universal. You know, and they are. You know, there's no place on the planet that murder is. You know, and it stems from the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. Let us consider Genesis 1 26 through 31. It says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image, and the image of Elohim created he male, him male and female created he them. And Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, Go and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree living seed. To you it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for you. So, and Elohim saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good, and evening in the morning for the sixth day. And there's a maxim that says the power which is derived cannot be greater than that from which it is derived. Now, that said, we see in this passage from which man was derived. So that power that man derived from the most high cannot be greater. Than that power from which it was derived from the most high. So, in other words, the most high is the most powerful. And even though he gave power to man, it is secondary to his own. Amen. Yes. Exodus 20, 1 through 8. And Elohim spake all of these words, saying, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which hath brought thee out of the land of this land from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other Elohim before me. No other gods before him. Our hell is a jealous hell. He said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the under the earth. Thou shalt not bow. 
down thyself to anyone serving him, but I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous for Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guilty that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Elohim, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, and that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim gave thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his behind, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. There's another maxim that says, that is the highest law which favors religion. And so these laws set the present precedent to religion for all other laws that will come forth. Uh, there's another maxim that says that which is against divine law is repugnant to society and is void. So anyone who makes a law that is against divine law, it is repugnant. And to society and is for. Also, let's consider Isaiah 33 22. For Yahoo is our judge, Yahoo is our lawgiver, Yahoo is our king, he will save us. There's another maxim. Here's another maxim. The chief, the chief is principal part of everything is the beginning. Our L, our king, is the beginning. He's our judge. He is our lawgiver. Okay. He says in Matthew 5, 17 through 19, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily, I say unto you, in heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, shall teach me and so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso shall do them and teach the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We have another maxim that says what is first is true and what comes first in time is best in love. You know and so I want you to understand from which things spin. You know it stems from the most high. He was the first. Everything else is second to him. So he is the truest. And what comes first in time is best in law. He, his law is the best law. So I don't care if the legal system says, you know, they condone same sex marriage. That may be legal. Marriage is not holy matrimony. Holy matrimony is religious. That's the difference. It's religious. It happens in, in the ecclesia or in the church. The sanctity is defined and can't be defended. Marriage is a social and legal contract that provides rights, obligations, privileges, and protections that are not afforded to those who are unwed. Unlike holy matrimony, marriage is a civil right. To deny civil rights to your to our own citizens is quite frankly the most un-American thing we can do. Genesis 1 26 said, and I want you to say, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. There's another maxim that says, the power which is derived cannot be greater than that form, than that from which it is derived. Um, that was one of the first maxims we took a look at. And then we took a look at 
another one that says the chiefest principle of how everything is the beginning. And we see in the beginning, uh, even in Isaiah 33 22, who our first judge is, who our first lawgiver is, who our king is. Amen. You know, and we look at another maxim that says, but it's the first, it's true. What comes first in time is best in law. Again, this points back to our creator. Then there's a maxim that we went over that said, that is the highest law which favors religion. And religion is all about our creator once again. And then there's a maxim that says that which is again is against divine laws and parts of the society and order. So what I'm trying to point out here is that holy matrimony points back to our creator. Marriage, legal marriage points back to the state. Now, Genesis 2, 18 to 24, it says, Now, what oh, he said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a healthy force. And out of the ground, Yahweh oh, he formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto the eyes to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in Yahweh only caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He slept and took one of the ribs, broke up the flesh and said, There are the ribs which Yahweh only did and did. It be a normal. Brought her to the man. Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. They shall be one flesh. Amen. State marriages requires that the couple obtain a state license. Well, what is a license? Has anyone ever stopped to think about what is a license? License speaks to the permission. By competent authority to do an act which without such permission would be. It may be illegal, but that doesn't make it unlawful. The permission. Why do we need the state's permission? Think about it. Why would you need the state's permission for you to marry the love of your life? Why would it ever be legal to do something that our Creator has instituted without the express permission of the state? What if they say no? What if you apply for the license and they refuse? Let us consider, consider 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 5. It says, For our gospel be here. It is here to the man of our lives. In whom the, hell, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Shia, who is the image of Elohim, shall shine unto them. We preach not ourselves, but the Shia, Yahush, who are the Adonai. Our, and ourselves were servants for Yahush, were saved. There's another maxim that says the laws of nature are unchangeable. God's law is unchangeable. Amen. God's law cannot be changed. Not by the state. Not by the, by the, the city. Not by anybody. When a couple marries with a marriage license, they make the state a third party to their marriage. And as a consequence, appeal the state jurisdiction and authority over. This is why you have to ask the state for permission. But our L, our L, our Creator in Exodus 23 said, "Thou shalt have no other Elohim, no other gods before me." Our L is our judge; he is our God. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one 
and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Elohim and God. Yahushua answered and said to him, If you be kind, he said, for it is great. I shall worship the Adonai that Elohim and God and you only shall not serve. Romans 6 16, know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. In other words, when you choose to yield yourself to the state or to any authority outside of the authority of the Most High, then they run contrary to the most high. You're serving a different master. You're not serving the one true master, the most high master. So we always want to be certain that we're serving only one master. Because even as our Messiah taught us, no man can serve two. We don't we don't know. Love the one take the other. My suggestion, my approach. Is to worship Adam and I like And only shall not serve the Lord. I guess that's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have a way. <laughs> we're going to take a short break um, so that the uh, so that the uh, bride and groom can go get dressed and we're going to rearrange some things um, right quick. <laughs>